All right. So, Janine, this is a mic check. Yes. So, you know what a mic check is? Mic check. Mic check. No, 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 one, no, no. Two, no, no, no. You got to do it the way Five, I do it. Five, four, three, two, one. So follow my lead. <clears throat> microphone check one, microphone check two, three. Some of you. Microphone one check. Microphone no, check. microphone check one. Okay. Mic microphone check one, microphone check two, three. Three. Yeah. You remember that song? No. Old school hip hop? I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Janet Copper with the Social Light Production, where we are connecting the world through faith culture and entertainment. I am here with this gorgeous, gorgeous. Look, look, look. Yeah, 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 you got to do a little swoop. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do introductions later, but let's yeah. go ahead and say hey to the people. Tell hey, them everybody. You What's up? It's JD, also known as JD, the diva with the dirt, mm -hmm. also known as JD with divine purpose. Mm -hmm. Radio personality with B11.9, have been now in Charlotte Market for 30 years. 30. Isn't that crazy? It's a blessing, actually. It's a blessing, but it's also crazy because my goal was to only be here five years. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? Now, that's crazy. But you know what's crazy? Mm. How God be reworking. Come on. Her. You know, why don't we just, we just jumped in the interview. This, this is interview. This is how we do it. Okay. So, and we're going we, we, to pause, but I hope you don't forget the crazy part. I want to hear more about that. Absolutely. All right. All right. So, you saw the introduction slash interview. We were getting started already but i just want to tee this up and especially for those who don't know who i am again I, my name is janet copper i am the creator and founder of a social life production the mission is connecting the world through faith culture and entertainment for the month of february we are doing love stories of course you know you talk about love valentine's day is mm -hmm. what tomorrow right yeah this will be aired after but valentine's day is tomorrow and so i'm highlighting things and people that I love. And Janine Davis oh, has always, always been a person that I love. Even before I knew her and would just hear you on the radio. Yeah. I was like, she's so dope. Like, she just, such a lady. She's herself, mm. you know. You know how to be polished and professional. She knows how to be ghetto. She knows <laughs> how to be all mixed in. And the thing I love about it is you do it regardless of the audience. Yeah. That's true. You have always been yourself. Like, I'm getting into the interview again. Yeah, that's Let's good. break it back. But no, seriously, I love that about you. But even more so, I love how she's given me opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right? When you speak about mentorship, leadership, mm -hmm. um, just being a, a, a positive influence. And we'll get into that. But overall, um, I love her. Oh, and I want to publicly... Thank her. I always yes. call your name to thank her, but I want to publicly yeah. thank you Absolutely. for who you are and who you've been, not only to me, mm -hmm. but to the world. You'll be surprised mm. who you've impacted, yeah. right? And so we'll get into all of the amazing things that she um, has done and just who she is. But I just wanted to, to tee it up, love stories. And so before we get into the meat of this conversation, I want to talk about some of the things that we love. Mm. Janine, what do you love? Ooh. I love sleeping in. Oh, yes. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. I love fresh, fresh seat sheets. I almost said something wrong. <laughs> sheets. Yes. I love um, quiet moments, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Like literally just coming home and I've created what you all have complimented. And thank you. Yeah, this house As is my dope. safe space. Yes. Um, and just lighting my candles mm -hmm. and being quiet. Yeah. And I think a lot of people they assume that because I work at a radio station, I'm in entertainment. Right. I'm ready, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah, right, right, right. But no, it's another part of me that loves being quiet. Mm -hmm. I'll come home and dr while driving in my car, I won't even turn the radio on. Just silence. Just silence. So it's the little things that I love. Mm -hmm. You know, I love a good sale. When I feel yes. like I've saved like 50 or 60 percent. That's a blessing. Yes! <laughs> I love nice clothes, nice yes. shoes. Yes. Y'all see, we probably can't see your shoes. But. Nice statement pieces. Nice decor wall. This is not just, this is not wallpaper. You can't see the details, but this is like so dimensions. Silly. Like, it 3D. Is, yeah, 3D. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. What do you love about your name? Mm. I love that, that I'm okay being me. Mm. For a long time and then growing up, and you might not, well, you do know the story. I was really shy. Yes. You know, I dropped out of kindergarten. 
Um, and then I attributed a lot of that shyness to not really, of course, knowing who I was or liking who I was. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I started to like who I was when I was in middle school and I auditioned for a play. Mm -hmm. I was going to play Betsy Ross. <laughs> Betsy Ross. Anyway, so, I, but I made Betsy Ross Janine. And it was not, you know, the proper. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how they talk back then, but it wasn't that. Yeah. I became Janine. Mm -hmm. Janine Ross. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the, the audience loved it. All my friends were like high-fiving me and, you know, mm -hmm. doing all that good stuff and just complimenting me on that. And I liked the reaction I got from being myself. Right. And so from there, I was like, I want to do this for a living. I want to be a, a movie star. I want to be a professional mm -hmm. actress. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't do that. Uh, but I did go into radio, which actually is kind of like a form of acting to some degree. To some degree. Yeah. Um, it is in entertainment. So uh, that's when I began to realize, okay, I like me. I do like who I am. Mm -hmm. And all the quirks that come with Janine. Around what age? Were you still in school, in college? Like, when did you come to that discovery? Well, in middle school is when I, I must have been maybe, what, 12? Oh, that's when it started that's as far as you said. Okay. Because before okay. then, I didn't really know who I was. I mm -hmm. didn't know, know what I liked. Mm -hmm. And I saw the reaction of what people gave me when I was myself. Hmm. And then I gave myself permission to be me. And I was okay with it. Can we pause there? Because that's one of the things that I absolutely love about Janine. And that what, that's what made me, like, just flock to her because... I, I too was shy. I didn't know who mm -hmm. I was. I didn't know my voice. Mm -hmm. I hated the way I said. And to be honest, sometimes I'm like, Ugh, I don't like the way my voice sounds, but I, I, I reject that thought mm -hmm. because that's the thought of the enemy that's to right. try to stop you from speaking, whether yeah. it's behind a camera, on stage, wherever. But what I love about Janine is she taught me how to fully be myself mm -hmm. in professional environments. Yeah. She taught me how to speak in my voice, not code switching. Yeah. And we all kind of code switch, well, right? You, yeah, but you, you do it in your voice. Right. So it's like if I'm dressing for a wedding, I'm not going to wear what I go to, you know, wear right. at the gym. Exactly. So people give code switching a bad rap, but regardless of how you present yourself, mm -hmm. do it in your voice. That's right. One thing that I remember when I started to do public speaking, um, Janine said, and I don't know what made you say this, if you saw me or you was just giving me tips, but mm -hmm. she was like, just smile. Smile and relax. Yeah. I don't know if you remember what she just I said. Do. Just smile and relax because she knows I could be tense. <laughs> She's like, relax, lady. Relax, lady. Like, relax. <laughs> That's right. But no, just, just talk about that just as it relates to how, because you've been in spaces, like mm. all types of spaces, yeah. right? Even places where people may feel they don't belong. Mm -hmm. How did you really learn how to be comfortable and confident in your with your voice which includes you know mm -hmm. you well it's an evolution i'm constantly evolving obviously when i said in middle school i just kind of found my space mm -hmm. um that has evolved though mm -hmm. over the years because you know in middle school you still you're yeah, still, still confused yeah you know, still, still growing still growing <laughs> and i just think it's just been over time in certain situations where i was forced to either speak up for myself mm -hmm. um, or be okay with myself. Mm -hmm. And I can remember when I got my very first job in radio. It's right out of college, um, believe it or not. In what school? North Carolina A&T State University. Well, he right. Okay, I was waiting for oh, that. Yeah, he right. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I got my very first job and I was uh, on a morning show, which is like, you know, the college. pinnacle, right? Yeah. 21 years old, had never had a professional radio job before, and I was working with two men, older mm. men who had been in the business either 20 or 30 years, and I was scared to death. Yeah. Now, it was a lot of fun, and I was excited, yeah. but I was forced to use my voice. Mm. That was the time when Anita Hill, that whole thing was mm -hmm. happening. And so, you know, I think some one of them <coughs> asked me a question about, well, how do you think about Anita? What do you think about Anita Hill? And I was like... <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what I think. Yeah. And so I realized that I had to, to study and, and find, like, what is your opinion about her? Right. Was she wrong? Was Clarence Thomas wrong? Right. And I had to really, because it forced me to think and to have an opinion. Right. I was in a position where I was forced to think and have an opinion. And so that obviously contributed to my confidence. Right. Um, doing, being in situations like that, 
And then, of course, from that radio station, one or two jams, I moved on to another radio station. It was a Jesse Helms owned radio station. Mm. You don't know anything about Jesse Helms. I mean, he's very similar to what I think a lot of people say Donald Trump is now. He yeah. owned a radio station in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I was the only African American on the mm. staff. Once again, in a situation where I was forced to defend or speak up or right. what have you. At that time, it was uh, Rodney King being doing it. Oh. And just the energy had shifted yeah. in the whole newsroom. That's why I was working. Right. And it was one of the reporters who made this comment like, well, we don't know what happened um, before that beating took place. Obviously, he did, he did something to warrant that beating. Mm. And I felt it bubbling up. Mm, of course. And of course. Um, and I can't remember what I said, but I did speak up use your about voice. that. So again, I was in situations that forced me to use my voice. And again, it gave me a boost of confidence. Right. And so I think anytime that you're in a situation that is extremely uncomfortable, it is a chance for growth. Hmm. And at the time, I didn't know that. I was just like, why am I here? What am I doing? What's going on? Right, right. Um, but I think it was God's way of preparing me to have a strong voice right and to believe in myself and right and not doubt and i don't think i never doubted myself it's right. not that but i was just scared right on the journey right but now because i've gone through that again as you go through these processes and lessons you learn you learn from them you do and you get stronger and you get better you do it's interesting you said that because it it goes along with what I want to highlight and the story that I always tell in reference to Janine. To Janine. Mm -hmm. So I used to work, um, when I was around, I think about 25, 26, I was working at Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. um, met one of my good friends, well, our good friends, Debbie Page. Yeah. Shout out to Debbie. But she, Debbie is a good friend of mine, but she's also like a mentor. Mm -hmm. So she forced me in spaces, but she was gentle with it, right? Um... But one of the spaces she forced me in, I shouldn't say forced, not forced, but invited me to go yeah, and to encouraged. grow, right? Encouraged, yeah. that's a better word. <laughs> encouraged, <laughs> slash force. Like, you don't know me, that's a But anyway, um, Girl Talk Foundation. Mm -hmm. That is, and still is your organization, that's right? And we'll, we'll go into that, but, um, well, no, actually, talk, tell them what it is and then I'll go into my story. <laughs> what is Girl Talk Foundation? It is your baby, it's your yeah, vision. Yeah, I burst but, it. But specifically what it is. It is. It's a mentoring program, essentially, for girls mm -hmm. from ages 11 to 16 who are like those girls that we were, mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. We don't know how. And so we have created a curriculum mm -hmm. um, that supports that. The right. things that they go through, whether it's being a good friend, whether it's anger management, mm -hmm. um, whether it's you know how do you deal with social media and diversity. Right. Um, what am I going to do about college? How am I going to get there? So we took that 13 week program and we invite about 25 girls to participate, go through their program. Mm -hmm. And they start out um, just as con unconcerned. They don't want to do it. They're right. complaining why they're getting up so early. It's right. on Saturday mornings. And then they end with saying, hey, I'm so glad I did this. I met new friends. There are other girls who are having issues just like me. Right. So all of that gives you a boost of confidence. Right. So that's what we did. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what she, well, yeah, we did, we but did. she led it. But the reason why I brought that up is, for one, it's an amazing organization, mm -hmm. right? Um, two, although we were mentoring those young ladies and trying to build them up, mm -hmm. I too was being mentored, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not so much by the, the ladies, but by the volunteers, by yes. the leaders. And I would never forget. And I always wonder, I'm like, why did she trust me to do some of this stuff? Like the, the first wine tasting, excuse me, fundraiser was a wine tasting at Morton Steakhouse. Yes. And you, I, I don't know if I was a co-lead or what, or whatever it was, I was nervous, Aww. right? Because you had all these professionals and, and, and big names coming and mm -hmm. you were telling me to do things, but some of the things you were telling me to do, I didn't have any context or mm -hmm. um, a perspective of how it was supposed mm -hmm. to be. It was my first event. So I, I would ask Janine questions and she was just real, not so much she was, she wasn't mean, but she was just real, like, in a, in a, in a, I don't even know how to describe you, but you were focused, okay. right? But you were more so focused on the strategic stuff. Yeah. What I was worried about was pretty much low-hanging fruit. No, stop. It was no, important. it was important, but yeah, it was really low-hanging fruit. My focus was not there. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And so you pretty much trusted me to figure it out, even if I messed up. Yeah. I wasn't confident enough mm -hmm. to trust my decision. That's right. 
So Debbie Page, she helped me. She kind of laughed because she saw what was going on. I was so frustrated. But to the point of what you said, when you're put in situations where you have to figure it out, that's mm -hmm. how you grow. That's right. And that was one of my first major experiences yeah. just dealing with pressure. And you did it. You I did good. it. I did it. You I was it mad. I was thinking, oh my God. Nobody was even thinking about Hell it. Hell no. <laughs> it was like you were there, you were present, you right? Happen. Right, Boom. right. So, when you speak about confidence, mm -hmm. it doesn't like you don't ever master it. When I say that, each mm -hmm. level comes with another level of confidence, right. Right? right? Talk about that because you've moved through your career, you've moved through innovation, things you've created. Mm -hmm. Even this space, I'm sure it didn't always look like this, no, right? Even her look. She's I fine. Know, right? You have, but it, I don't want to make people who don't know you to to, to make yeah, it seem like yeah. you've never been stylish. Right. She's always been stylish, but she's found a way to be confident in her creations, hairstyle, dress. Let's talk about that. Your journey yeah, of confidence. I just think it's like you just said. You evolve over experiences. We both have said that, and right. so I think about when I was in high school. Um, you know, I was not, I was a girly girl. Mm -hmm. I was, I was in the popular crowd. However, mm -hmm. not for being, you know, super fine, she that, and she this. Right. But it was my personality that right. people loved so much. Right. So um, that made me get along with just about everybody. Mm -hmm. And so that boosted my confidence. So that evolved, though, when I went to college. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden, I, that's when I started paying attention to my look. Because mm. before, you know, I was like, hey, you know, I dress decent. But when I went to college, these guy, guys started looking at me. They didn't look at me like that in, in high school. They were like, yeah, what's up, girl? But in college, it was like, what's up? What's your name? How you doing? Mm, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so... Um, that gave me a different level of confidence. Right, you know right, what I mean? right. And so, um, went through college, and so that was that. It was the look, and you care about how you look. You care about how you sound. Mm -hmm. um, you care about who you hang around. Right. Um, so that was another evolution. And then when you get out on your own, that was another level of confidence. Right. Because I knew I had to have a job, not just a job, but a career that I loved. Right. Very passionate about what I do in radio. Several of my friends at that time, they worked for MCI when they got out of school. Gotcha. MCI was a big telecommunications company. Yeah. They're like what, what Verizon is now, mm -hmm. back then, in mm -hmm. the 80s. And so my, one of my girlfriends was like, I'm going to work for MCI because they were paying like $40,000 then, then was, yeah. a year. So yeah. that was huge. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I don't want that though. Level of confidence. Mm -hmm. I want to do what I want to do. And I'm willing to make the sacrifice. So I think I got a job making $15,000 a year. So now, right. So now, of course, he's looking at me like, God, I didn't stick with it, did I? I said, you know. So yeah. again, it's just level. You get different levels of confidence right. as you go through. Right. Um, and so that was a big one for me, just being able to say, I'm going to be confident enough in myself and believe I can do this thing. Right. And it's going to pay off in the end. Well, to, to, to talk a little bit more about confidence, we both, we talked about this for a it don't matter how much we stump on this floor, it ain't going nowhere, right? I know y'all can hear me stumping, but I'm using that as an analogy because mm. of what we stand on and mm. where our confidence Freeze. comes yes. come from, right? That's right. And so you have the what? Are, what are your moments called when you give like, inspirational moments? Inspirational mm. moments, which is tied to faith, right? Absolutely. Talk about that because you are a believer, Absolutely. and you 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 preach it, you speak it, right? Mm -hmm. But that's where that confidence is thriving from. But talk a little bit about that, how that, your faith, your belief has carried you through. Absolutely. Um, that That's everything. Mm -hmm. And I have to be completely honest and transparent in saying that starting JD's Inspirational Moments, which is like a 60-second moment mm -hmm. um, in which I am opening up about how something has happened in my life and mm -hmm. I attribute it to God. Right. And so I do that on the radio which I never thought would be possible. Right. Uh, so I was doing overnights. I'll tell you how it came to being. I was doing overnights, meaning I was working from midnight to 6 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, filling in for somebody, and then it was a break that I would record. The last hour was a gospel hour, so it was just all gospel mm -hmm. music. My last talk break would be at like 5.45 a.m. 
And so I had pre-recorded that. Mm -hmm. And I started to, I said, well, why don't I just leave them with something? Because mm -hmm. I felt it just hit my spirit. Right. Um, and it was an analogy that I used going in my parking garage. I had seen this Porsche that was covered. And I'm like, they take so much care in covering that Porsche. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, how God takes care of me. Right. He protects me. And so right. I was saying this and I added some other, some other analogies to that. Yeah. But anyway, I said that for my break. And then I was like, I'm out. Mm -hmm. So I'm home by the time it plays back. And of course it plays back at quarter to six in the morning. And my phone is blown up. And I'm like, what? Why is he <laughs> I'm getting text messages from people saying, oh my God, that was so good. Da, 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 da. That was powerful. That was a good word. I'm like, but I didn't say nothing. But did I? Yeah, you did. So that is how that started. Yeah. And I said, well, okay. Fast forward six months later, I'm given the opportunity to have my own show. Mm -hmm. Um, 10 to 3 on V and I accepted mm -hmm. um, I knew it was God because my general manager came to me before I even accepted and mm -hmm. said well, you know I want this job to be yours I've always wanted you in this role mm -hmm. I was part time for like a year or something yeah. and I was like okay <laughs> and um, we discussed salary and all that and uh, and he gave me the position well he gave it to me but he said hey mm -hmm. and he told me um, that 300 people had applied for the position Mm. And he was like, well, it's yours. So I'm like, okay, God, now what, what? So did you want me to go through all of this because you wanted me back on the radio? Because I had stopped radio. Right, I remember I that. You sure did. I wasn't doing radio. I wasn't going back to radio. You I was sure tired did. of radio. I was burned out from radio. And apparently God said, no, you're going to do it again. And you're going to do this inspirational moment because there are some souls that need to be saved. And this may be the only church that a lot of people get. Preach. When listening to our radio station. Preach. And so I have done it every day, mm -hmm. uh, Monday through Friday at 135. And it amazes me the number of people who are touched by it. Mm -hmm. And they just come to me. My girlfriend is like, I don't understand how you just come up with it. I'm like, lady, it just, it just, it just comes Remember to me. Remember that ground? <laughs> I know. So it's all God. And mm -hmm. I look at just my entire career. Right. And just saying, you know, when you were this shy little girl mm -hmm. who dropped out of kindergarten didn't mm -hmm. want to be around anyone else but your mom and your grandmother right today you are you know speaking to thousands of people they are inspiration and i i didn't know i would had he told me that back then i would have been like you lying yeah child please right <laughs> i don't want to do that That's but awesome. it's all god i mean when you look at your life and what you're doing too yeah and us coming together yeah that is god orchestrated absolutely and, and I have to give him the praise every single time yes. when things like this happen because yeah. it is all him. Yeah. And that's why we're in the positions that we are in. That's why I'm in the, on the platform that I have Right. to praise him. Absolutely. I call it, um, um, it's, it's ministry in disguise. Yeah. Right? So when, when you speak about a social light production, like all these lights in our face right, right now, um, it's really the light, because people say, oh, you're so popular, this and that, call me a socialite. Mm -hmm. And popularity is never the goal. That's right. But it's the impact from our influence. That's right. And so they're not attracted to my light. They're attracted to his light. And so instead oh, yeah. of socialite, it's social, L-I-G-H-T. So they don't realize this is the light of Christ Come that on. they're receiving. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. Right? Right? And, and you said how God works, how I was that young, impressionable um, girl right out of college looking up to this beautiful diva you know what I mean and just being under your umbrella literally following you when I say following you because I was a volunteer for Girl Talk yeah. but you placed me in positions even to lead the uh, teen summit for CIAA yes. that's a big task girl it was, it was crazy it, it, it was kind of crazy <laughs> but it it was all preparation. That's right. And I'll say for both of us, because although you were doing it, God will still add more for the next. So we can go on and on and on about that. Right. But the love stories, um, that love of Christ, of our faith, of that's God, right. that's what helps us to do what we're doing. I wish we had more time. Um, 30 minutes, an hour is not enough time mm -hmm. to unpack all of this. We may have to do a part two. But one thing I want to call out is... Um, I don't know if it's on your social media and or website. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I call it the three E's, but it's enrich, empower, evoke. Very much so. Yes. Let's talk about that. When I think about my identity, who is Janine Davis? 
she's all three of those things. Mm -hmm. So everything I'm doing, whether it is being on the radio, whether it's continuing to guide Alyssa, who's now running Girl Talk Foundation, yes. whether it's public speaking, whatever yes. it is, the website, right. uh, the Yes Honey. Yeah, yeah, yes. no, say it right. Yes Honey! All right. <laughs> uh, it's all around, centered around those three things. Right, to right. To enrich and power evoke. Yeah. To evoke change in people, to empower them, to enrich them. All those things are important to me. And, you know, I want whatever I'm doing to encompass those three words. And she has, and she continues to do do that. Um, before we wrap up, I want to kind of give a shout out, right? When you speak about uh, me honoring you, it's the legacy. Mm. The legacy of what you've established, of what you created, what you are continuing to create, but those that are coming behind. Mm. But I want to kind of call out real quick those that um, were and still are right mm -hmm. as it relates to media mm -hmm. um you know growing up in charlotte um i'm born and raised in charlotte north carolina but i also have to call out that i'm a liberian american first generation mm -hmm. um but i have the best of both worlds but as it relates to charlotte and the community outside of my african community i grew up with power 98 oh my god and v101.9 yeah. you know i think about was it Skip Murphy yeah, and yes, BJ Murphy? Oh, that's Skip Murphy was before me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look at that. See, no, 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 yeah, yeah. He's a legend. He's yeah. a legend. He's still living. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it BJ Murphy? BJ Murphy. Nate, the late Nate, Nate Quick. Quick. Oh yeah. my God. Fly Time, who's Fly still Fly in existence. Right. Yeah, I don't know if I'm missing anyone, but just the way culture has evolved and media has evolved, mm -hmm. but you're still relevant. Right. How are you able to thrive? Through the changes of just expectations with the craziness out here, but yet still have your standards, but yet still be relevant with the times. Um, and that's the key, being relevant. I think everybody, I centered myself, number one, on Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the foundations you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And then with that, being authentic. Authentic. No matter what stage this is from social media to right. whatever. Right. Um, Everybody is attracted to authenticity. Yes. Authenticity. Yes. It's, it's realness. Yes. And so no matter where you go, as long as you're real, as long as you can be authentic. Right. As long as you can be you. And right. people can sense authenticity. They know people it. People can sense fakeness. They know it. They know they it. They are attracted to the realness. Mm -hmm. So I think that has been my, my the reason for my mainstay. Yeah. My staying power is just being real. No matter what. You have something that this world needs, and if you act outside of character, then you're you're you. A lot of people are missing out on what they can get from Janine. Mm. So to wrap this up, you know, Janine clearly she's a leader as well. She didn't mention it. Leaders usually don't say they're a leader, but she's hey, a, I'm leader. a leader, right? <laughs> right? Hey, they right? Man. They don't do that. But I'm saying that, and I want to do a quote um, from Greg. Excuse me, Craig Rochelle. I'm not sure if you you know him. He's mm. a he's a minister. Um, and a leader, he does leader podcasts, but he he always um, leads or and or ends with this statement: People will rather follow a leader that is real than one that is always right. Mm. And Janine is definitely one of those individuals. We're definitely going to have a part two, maybe outside somewhere. We just have to start with part one in this house <laughs> because there's so much more I have to say, oh, but we don't God. have time to say. But, but I just want to thank God again for you, yes. for being a blessing, yes. and just for all of the opportunities that you've provided. May God bless you in this next season. Mm. You continue to be an inspiration. All the things that he has for your hands to create. Come on, God. May yes. it be blessed. I received it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Any last words for your good part? Yes. No. I just want to say thank you so much, Janet. Mm. I'm so proud of you. I'm thank sitting you. over here glowing and looking at you like, oh my God, look at my baby. Come along, baby. She has come a long way. <laughs> and you are just as authentic and bubbly yeah. and spirited. And, and you are a walking light. That's why I'm attracted to you. We probably blinding y'all with all this light. <laughs> <laughs> But and the thing you. is, we're both unapologetic about who God has made us Come to on, be. God. Now we are. Before I wasn't. I, would, I wasn't it. either. Yeah, Give me some love. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. Thank yeah, you for good. joining the Social Life Production, connecting the world through faith, culture, and entertainment. You can follow me on A Social Light, L I G H T. Um, Janine, how can they follow J -D -Diva. you? JD Diva. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.